What's up Pythoners? This is Vishesh Dwivedi and welcome back to my channel all about Python. Today we are going to talk about how you can create a modern looking graphical user interface in Python using the E library. We are going to talk about what E is, how it works and how you can create your own desktop app with modern GUI in Python. So without any further ado, let's begin. When it comes to attractive graphical user interface, the first thing a software developer would think of is CSS. HTML along with CSS provides huge capabilities to designers to use their imaginations to create stunning user interface. No other GUI framework, technology or language can match HTML and CSS in its capabilities. So it's fair to use HTML and CSS to create GUI in Python. And that's exactly what Eel does. Eel is a simple library created to work similar to Electron.js. It runs a local web server whenever the Python application is started that exposes Python functions to the JavaScript code and vice versa. A developer can easily create user interface in HTML and CSS, create core app functionalities in Python and then use JavaScript on HTML side to call Python functions or use Python script to call JavaScript functions. Together they can help a developer create great looking desktop apps capable of performing amazing tasks. With the basics of E clear Let's create a sample to-do desktop application in Python to understand how it works. So as you can see, I have my VS Code editor opened here. Before we start, if you don't have Python and VS Code setup on your system, I highly recommend watching this video where I have specified each and every step in downloading and installing Python and setting up Visual Studio Code with Python. You can watch the video and then come back and continue with this one. So we will start by downloading and installing the eel module. Doing this in Python is super easy. Just open the terminal from VS Code or your system and type pip install eel. This command will download and install eel module within your system. Once the module is downloaded and installed, we are going to start creating some files. First, we will create a file named main.py. This file will contain all the Python code we will use within our app. Next, we will create a folder named web. This folder will contain all the HTML, CSS and JS files that we will use in our GUI. Within the web folder, we will create another file index.html. This file will contain all the HTML code that we will use. We will also create one script.js file to store all of the JavaScript code that we will write. In order to create attractive UI easily, I'm gonna use Bootstrap CSS here. To add Bootstrap CSS, you can download the Bootstrap files from its official site getbootstrap.com or you can get it from the repository link in the video's description. I already have Bootstrap files in another folder, so I'm just gonna copy paste these files here. Similar to Bootstrap, we are also going to use jQuery files to add a little animation to the UI. You can download jQuery files from its site or from the repo. I will also copy the jQuery folder here. With this, all of our required files are now created and we can start with the coding of the project. We will start with the main.py file to first create a simple app window. First, I will import the eel module by writing import eel. This line will simply import the eel module inside our Python script. Next, we will write eel.init followed by round brackets and then double quotes web. This line will start the eel's local web server on the path specified inside the init function. Since we have stored all our files inside the web folder, we will pass web as a string to the init function. Next, we will write eel.start round brackets and then double quotes index.html. This line will start the Chrome app and render the application window. 
You can specify the window size and some other parameters that you can view in the EEL documentation link in the description. But for now, we will go with the default window size and other settings. Note that we have passed index.html file name to the start window as this is the name of the file that we need to display when we start the app. We don't need to specify the web folder here as EEL will automatically look for this file inside the folder we have specified inside the init function. With just these three lines, we should be able to see the app window when we run the app. In order to run it, we will open up a terminal window either through VS Code or through Windows and type python main.py and hit enter. As you can see, the app window has appeared on our screen. Right now, it's completely empty and also the window title is not right as we don't have any code inside the index.html file. So now we will close the window and start working on the index.html file. Firstly, we will quickly write the necessary HTML tags like HTML, head, title, meta, body, etc. Note that the text you write within the title tag will appear on the window title. So we will write to do app here. The next step is very important to be performed for the EEL module to work properly. Inside the body tag, we will add a script tag and within its src, we will write slash eel.js. Note that I haven't created any eel.js file anywhere within the project, but this file will be created by the eel module. If the script is not imported within the HTML file, you will not be able to call JavaScript functions from Python and vice versa. So make sure to add it. Now I will just fast forward a bit and quickly add the HTML code that I have previously written down. So I have added link to the bootstrap CSS file here and I have also given a grey background color to the body through the style tag here. If we scroll down, I have created a white div inside which are three main components. A welcome message, a div containing a label, input text box to enter to-do name and a button to add to-do and finally a table to list all the to-dos. At the bottom of the file, I have imported three more JavaScript files, the jQuery file, the bootstrap file and the script.js file that we had created. This is how a HTML file will look like right now. Now we switch back to the main.py script to create some to-do functionality. We will start creating functions between the eel init and eel start line. Now before we start typing, I just wanted to inform that this to-do tool will store the to-do's data inside a JSON file kept inside the folder. Whenever we have to create list or delete to-dos, we will read data from this file and write data onto this file. We don't need to create the JSON file ourselves as the script will do that for us. So first we will add the line import json to the top of the script to read and write onto json files. I will also add one more line before the import statement and after the init function call to-do underscore count equals to zero. We will use this variable to keep track of the number of to-dos stored. Then we will create two functions read underscore data and write underscore data. So I will write define read underscore data bracket open close within the function we will write with open then brackets uh, double quotes data dot json comma then double quotes r in outside bracket as file colon and in the next line content equals to json dot loads and then within round brackets file dot read round brackets and then within it outside the with statement or below the with statement return content and in the next line we'll write define write underscore data round brackets within round brackets we'll write content colon then in the next line with open uh, double bracket uh, like brackets double quotes data dot json comma double quotes w then outside brackets as file colon 
and then below that we'll write file dot write brackets json dot dumps and bracket content and below that we'll write uh, below the with statement return content the read data function will read content from the json file and return it and the write data function will write data onto the json file next i will create four functions create underscore to do list underscore to do and delete underscore to do so i will write at the rate yield dot expose then we will define a create underscore to do within round brackets we will write title and then colon then we will write global to do underscore count next line new underscore to do equals to curly brackets then within that we will write id in double quotes colon to do underscore count plus one and in the next line double quotes title then colon title and then we'll close the curly brackets next we'll write content equals to read underscore data we'll just call the read data function content then square bracket uh, single quotes or double quotes to do's and then outside square bracket dot append new underscore to do then write underscore data bracket content next line to do underscore count plus equals to one and finally return new underscore to do notice the yield dot expose decorator this decorator as the name suggests will expose this function to the gui's javascript file which means that we can call this function from javascript which we will in a few minutes within the create function we first get the to do underscore count variable then we create a new dictionary object new underscore to do representing the new to do each to do will have a id which is a two which is the to do count plus one and a title which will represent the user entered title which we receive from javascript then we will create the list underscore to do function we will write at the rate yield dot expose then we'll define list underscore to do round brackets colon and within that we'll write return read underscore data round brackets as the name suggests this function will list out all the to do's that are stored within the json file this function will also have yield dot expose as this function will be called by the javascript code next we will create the delete underscore to do function at the rate yield dot expose then we'll define delete underscore to do and then round brackets will write id and then colon within that we'll write global to do underscore count content equals to read underscore data and then we'll write a for loop for to do in content square bracket to do's and within that if to do square bracket id double equals to id and then within that content to do's dot remove and then brackets to do and uh, below the for loop we'll write write underscore data bracket content and then to do underscore count minus equals to one this function will be responsible to delete to do's from the json file this function will also be accessible by the javascript code within the function we will we get the to do underscore count iterate through the list of to do's stored find the to do to be deleted by its id remove the to do and then rewrite the file without the to do Finally, we will write the last few lines of code we need for main.py file. We will write import os if not os.path.exist and then round brackets double quotes data.json and within the if statement we write file equals to open round brackets double quotes data.json comma double quotes w next line file.write round brackets json dot dumps then round brackets then curly brackets we are creating a dictionary object double quotes to do's and then colon and then an empty list and next line file dot close and then we'll create an else condition and within that we'll write content equals to read underscore data round bracket next line to do underscore count equals to 
length of content square bracket to do's. What this piece of code does is that it checks whether our JSON file is created or not. If it's not created, then we create a blank one. Else, we just retrieve the number of to do's already stored within the JSON file and save it in to do underscore count variable. With the Python part done, let's switch to the script.js file to add some functionality and animation onto the HTML. I will not focus much on the explanation of the JavaScript functionalities not related to yield as they are out of scope. Instead, I will focus more on the yield related functionality. So first, we will create three variables denoting three HTML elements. Todo underscore title underscore input, todo underscore add underscore button, and todo underscore table underscore body. The first one is the input text box used to enter the new todo name. The second one is the button to add a new todo to the list. And the third one is the tbody tag of the table which lists all the todos. Next, we will create a function to display a todo on the HTML table. Since JavaScript function is a bit big, I will just quickly copy paste the code and explain it. This function looks a, lit com a bit complicated than all the previous functions that we had written, but trust me, what it does is really simple. This function takes a to-do dictionary object as a parameter and creates row to be added onto the table with all the data of that specific to-do. We have to note two things here. First, yield.expose is written on the top of the function, indicating that this function is exposed to the Python code. I will explain in a bit why this is necessary. Also, we can see that yield.delete underscore todo function is mentioned within this function. This shows how you can call any Python function exposed by yield in JavaScript. The basic syntax is simple. Yield dot followed by the name of the Python function. Next, we will create a function to display all todos that will simply call the display todo function multiple times for each todo in a list. We will write yield.expose and then we will write function display all todos within and then round brackets we will write todos then we will create the curly brackets within that we will write for round brackets let todo of todos and then curly brackets within that we will write display todo and then within round brackets todo semicolon. We will use this function to load all the to-dos from the JSON file at the start of the app. Next, we will create a JavaScript event listener to be called every time a user clicks on add to-do button. We will write to-do underscore add underscore button dot add event listener round brackets double quotes click comma then round brackets event equals to greater than and then we have like curly brackets and within that we write let content equals to to do underscore title underscore input dot value semicolon if round bracket content not equals to double quotes and then within curly brackets we write yield dot create underscore to do round bracket content and then round bracket display to do this event listener will get the to-do name from the to-do title input field and call the python scripts create to-do function to create a to-do and store it in the json file. Notice the bracket after the create to-do content part with display to-do inside it. Now here is an important concept to understand. When we want to retrieve data from python using a javascript function we need to pass a callback function from JavaScript side. In this case, the callback function is display to do. If we get if we go back to create to do function, we can see that the function returns the newly created to do in the form of a dictionary. So what really happens is that JavaScript calls the create to do function, Python creates the new to do and adds it to the JSON file and then calls the function display to do mentioned here and passes 
the new to do object as a parameter to the display to do function. That's why the display to do function takes in to do as a parameter. Since Python would call this function, we added yield.expose on top of it to provide Python script access to the function. I hope I was able to explain the code functionality. In case if you didn't understand, you can try re-watching the video or ask your doubts in the comment section below. Finally, we will add one more line of code at the end of this file. Eel dot list underscore to do round brackets, then again round brackets, display all to do's. Just like I explained earlier, Eel calls the list underscore to do function in Python, which returns a list of all to do's saved inside the JSON file. We also pass the display all to do's function to be called in by the Python script and the list of to do's to be passed to this function. Then display all to do's would simply display all the to do's on the UI. One more important thing that I failed to mention before is that within the display all to do's function in the for loop where we write let to do of to do's after to do's we need to add a square bracket and within square bracket inside double quotes need to write to do's because if we look at the data.json the way we store data you can see that we uh, have a dictionary and inside the dictionary we have a key to do's and that to do's key has the list so within the script.js we need to specify that we have to iterate the list present inside the to do's dictionary object with this, we finally complete the app. Now let's open a terminal and run python main.py to see how our app looks like. As you can see, we have our to-do app here. We can enter the name of a new to-do, for example, creating video and click on add and our new to-do will get added. We can enter more to-dos like play piano and add it to the list. We can click on any to-dos completed checkbox to mark it completed and remove it from the list. If we close the app and start it again, then we can see that all the existing to-dos remain saved. With this, we end this tutorial on Eel. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you face any problems or issues, do mention it in the comments below and I will try my best to solve it. You can find all the resources used in this tutorial down in the video's description. With this, it's time for me to go. This is Vishesh Dwivedi signing off.